Hi, this is Mark from Wiki Design. In this spline tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take a 2D logo from a program like Illustrator and make it into a 3D model like this. From there, you can also create static images, videos, or in this case, an interactive 3D model. So now I'm just going to jump into Illustrator and show you step by step on how I created something like this. So let's just jump right into it. And here we are in Illustrator, and as you can see, uh, we have our Wiki Design logo. So we just have three simple shapes up here. And then each one of our letters we have, as you can see in the layers, we just have it all broken out into a different path. So what I recommend is if you have a more complex logo or anything like that, make sure that it's all underneath uh, one big layer and then all of your different shapes. That's going to make it a little bit easier. So this is going to be what we're going to be using in this tutorial. So now what we need to do is save this out as an SVG image and then we can import that into Spline. So what we need to do is go to File and then Export, Export As. And then from there, you're just going to want to make sure that you choose the file type as SVG and hit Export. Now it's going to pull up the SVG options. And you could just keep this just like I have it here. So for styling, keep it internal CSS. Convert, uh, if you have any fonts, you want to convert those to outlines. You can preserve the images and you could just keep everything else like this. And then just hit OK. So now your SVG has now been saved to your computer. Now what we need to do is just click and drag that into a new file on Spline. So let me go ahead and just click. And like I said, I'm just dragging in the SVG from my other window. And once you click it and bring it in, you can see right here, it automatically is bringing in the logo. So now we can clean up a few different things. So anytime you start a new file in Spline, it automatically adds this rectangle. So just go ahead, hit delete. And then this right here is your directional light. Let's go ahead and just delete that now because later in the tutorial, we're just going to be adding a spotlight, which gives you a lot more control. So just delete that. So now what we can do is let's go ahead and just show you how everything is imported. So as you can see right here on the left side, this is all of your different layers or 3D models. And you can see it's just bringing it in as one big layer. And then this inside of Illustrator, these are all the different shape files right here. So you just want to make sure everything looks good when you import it. The first thing I recommend doing is actually go ahead and rotate your camera. So I'm holding down the control button on the windows and middle of the mouse. And what I like to do is rotate it so it's all going to be flat. So you can see right here where this angle is. Let's rotate this. So I'm holding down the shift button. You want to rotate it where it's kind of flush up against how the ground's going to be. So negative 90 degrees. So you can see right here, now it's kind of flat. So now if we move the camera around, you can see it's flat. This makes it a little bit easier because down here where my mouse is, the green, this is now going to be your top view. So we're going to just kind of render everything out at your top view right here. So now that you have that, the next thing is let's go ahead and extrude all of these meshes out just a little bit. So again, you can just rotate the camera something like this. And what I recommend is go ahead if you have multiple shapes, select all of your shapes right here. I'm just holding down shift, click everything. And then right here underneath where it says shape on the panel over here, there's this box called extrusion. So you just want to click and drag that up a little bit. And you can see right here, if you go ahead and zoom in with your mouse, you can see that it's being extruded. So depending on how high you want it, you know, you could do it like a building or something like that. But let's just go ahead, like in my example, and just keep it kind of simple, something like that. So while this is all selected, what you could do is underneath your material right here, just click this button where these uh, four little dots are. And then what we're going to do is assign a kind of like a global My Materials uh, to this uh, mesh. So what that means is it's automatically going to be assigned to all of these different shapes right here. And then if you need to ever change it out, you're just going to change it out in one spot. Because technically you could assign a different material to every single one of these things. And you could also do like the uh, extruding at all different levels, but probably in most cases, if you're just doing logo, you want it all to kind of be the same height. So what you do is you just click right here. And like I said, let's go ahead and do like, um, Spline gives you a lot of like pre-made uh, materials. So you can go ahead, select one of these, and then you can just kind of change it out to however you want it to be. So if you just go right here, it says ceramic and marble, just click that. And now if we scroll down, um, any of these might work, but in this case, I was choosing Marble Noise 9. So once you select that, it's uh, not going to look great right out of the box because we need to make some changes. The first thing we're going to update is we're going to make sure that this all looks like it's tiling correctly. So what we need to do is change how the image is being kind of tiled. So what you do is 
as you can see, right now I'm underneath all my materials. So right now we just have this one mesh and this has Marble Noise 9 on it. So anytime I make changes right here, it's gonna update every, every single one of these shapes right here. So all you have to do if you need to make changes to this is click this button right here, it's kind of like your settings. And this has three different things on it, a mat cap, lighting, and noise. So the noise is what's giving this kind of that weird effect on the side. Uh, it's because it's not uh, tiled correctly. So what we need to do is just go ahead, click on that button right there, and it's gonna pull up all of this right within here. Then what we need to do is change some of the size and the scaling. So right now it's at 100X, 9Y, 100Z. So you can see if you start to change this around, it's gonna change it you know, pretty much everywhere. So what I recommend is figuring out a size that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and just do 50 all the way around. So if we do 50, 50, 50, you can see that already is starting to look a little bit better. Um, depending of course on how big your mesh is or how big you want this, uh, you can make it bigger or smaller. So if we go to something like 20, 20 and a 20, you can see it's gonna go a little bit smaller. It's gonna look more like a marble right now. And it looks like it's pretty seamless. Uh, you could also change um, the scaling right here. So now you can see, as soon as you start to change the scaling, it's gonna make it you know a little more tiled or not tiled. So once you're happy with the texture on your logo, and like I said, you can use any one of these in the pre-built settings. Uh, it's a good starting point and you kind of like i said reverse engineer it apply different images like if you want a concrete or stone you can just click that right here choose one that works and you can just kind of like i said change it as you go so now let's go ahead and uh let's just kind of add like a black leather looking background to it and then i'll show you how you you know add the lighting and everything so it's always best to go ahead and you know do all of your models and your textures first that you do lighting last and then of course set up the camera and all that is the very last thing you do so now let's go ahead and zoom out quite a bit. And if you click this button up here, the plus, let's go ahead and just add a rectangle. So something really big like this, something that you know is gonna fill up the screen a lot. So let's go ahead here. And let's say you want the camera to be around that. So that's gonna cover up everything. So while this is selected, you could also just name all of your layers. So if you're gonna have a lot of different layers, I definitely recommend getting in the habit of naming your layers correctly. So very similar to how we added the texture here, once that's selected, click these little dots right here. And you can also uh, choose, like I said, any one of these. But in this case, let's go ahead and use the AI to try to make us like a black leather. And let's see how well that's gonna work. And in order to do that, what you could do is, let's just go ahead and assign a concrete to it. And it doesn't really matter which one in this case. So let's just go ahead and do like concrete pattern. So of course that's gonna look like a mess right now because we need to change a few things in the images. But let's go ahead and you can see we're here, concrete pattern is selected. I'm gonna edit that. And this one has four different layers. It's got a color, image, lighting, and a matte cap. So if we go underneath where it says image, if you click that, you can close this. They do have a bunch of kind of pre-selected ones. Let's go ahead and close that. And let's do the AI. Uh, this is a pretty cool feature. I just wanted to show how this works. So if I type in black leather and then hit this button right here, it's gonna to start to generate some different textures for leather. Um, this is what it's gonna look like. That's not quite what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for a very simple, yeah, something like that. That works really well. So what I recommend is go underneath here as a large. Just give that a minute. So now that's gonna put it in there. So this looks weird right now. It kind of looks like you're going into space or something. So what's happening here is by default, um, Anytime you apply a material, it's automatically think it's like it's on a sphere. So in this case, it's a flat plane. So that's why it's looking weird. What we need to do is just change right here where it says projection. So if you're kind of lost to where we are, we're underneath image. You can click on image, close this down. You can close on AI. Sometimes these things like to stay open. You can always move them around. So once you click on image inside that material where it says projection, you can select. So in this case, I'm gonna be using triplanar. So after you select that, what I recommend is kind of zooming out and let's tilt the camera up a little bit just so we can kind of see the texture a little bit better. So if it's going to be like that. So you can see right here, it's working. Uh, you get very small right now. So what we want to do is make that texture bigger. So as you can see, we have the marble going into the black leather. So let's go ahead and make that a lot larger. So what you could do is increase this right here to something like 800 by 800. And you can see that's automatically going to bring it up quite a bit. 
So depending on your use case, you may want to bring it up more or less. Um, you could also change the scaling here. So if I start to change the scaling, you could see it's going to start to scale it on the X and the Y coordinates right here. So if you want it to scale even more, you can also change that. So let's change that to like a two and a two. That looks kind of big. So maybe like a 1.2, 1.2. So yeah, definitely play around with the different size and the scale. Uh, if you start to change with the size, depending on how the resolution saved out, it might start to look a little pixelated. So if I start to scale it too much, it can start to look a little too pixelated. So depending on what texture you're going to be using, make sure that you don't you know blow it up because this might not look so great. So I think that's uh, looking pretty good right now. So we could always, of course, change all of this stuff out. But let's go ahead and let's just add a light in here and then we, you can start to see how the shadows are going to work and how we can position this up. Now what I recommend is going back into the top view and we're going to be adding a spotlight. So let's go ahead down here and click the green button on the gizmo and that's automatically going to realign you back to the top. Now what we need to do is add a spotlight. So you click this plus button up here at the top and let's scroll down to the very bottom. Uh, they give you three different uh, lights in this software but in this case we're just going to be using spotlight so make sure you click on spotlight and the way it works is you can see here where my mouse is it's automatically always going to be positioned at zero 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 so the access point of zero x zero y and uh, zero z so in this case we don't have everything aligned that way so you can always move the logo there if you wanted but in this case we're going to be moving the spotlight so i'm just going to move it right here and I'm just gonna kind of move it to the center of the logo. That way it just kind of has like a center point. Then what I recommend is rotating the camera. So I'm just gonna, uh, on Windows, I'm holding down Alt and clicking. Uh, I've realized there's two different ways you can rotate in the software. You can always do Control and the mouse uh, button will rotate or Alt and the first button. I like doing the Alt and the click. It makes it a little bit easier. So while you have that spotlight selected, zoom out and you're going to see what's happening it's automatically going to the bottom of the floor so it's kind of pointing to nowhere so what we need to do is bring it up right here and you can see when you do that it's automatically gonna you can see the spotlight then over here they give you a lot of different options you have an intensity of one which is default and it goes all the way up to 10. Uh, so it kind of maxes out at 10. so if you need a situation where you need to have brighter light what you most likely are going to need to do is change the distance so you can see right here see where the distance is right here the further you make it the more intense it's going to be so you can make the distance kind of far if you need it to be brighter and you can also change the different angles so if you need i want a bigger spread so that's kind of making it fill up that whole entire plane so there's a lot of different ways you can do spotlights you can see that's kind of a weird spotlight but you just have this one object in here and when you move it up and down you're going to see it's going to bring in the light or not but let's go ahead and just kind of go back to here in the top view and you can see it's looking pretty good so far it's a little intense but let's go ahead and change that a little bit down so you can see something like that and of course you can always change the color so if you want to have like a red or a blue you can always change that right here so a lot of cool different effects let's go with a little bit of like a white tone so if you look, let's I always go back to top view because this is how I'm going to kind of uh, present it later. So you can see right here, the texture is looking a little bit uh, busy. So let's go ahead and make that pattern, you know, not so bright. So let's go ahead and select the floor. And if I go over here where the mat, uh, material is, you click on that again, where it says concrete pattern. And this is where we can change the lighting. So right now it's absorbing 100% of that light. So if we go and change it to like 20, you can see it's going to change how the light's going to be received. But let's go back maybe to 60. And then what we can do is you can get rid of this matte cap. We're not going to be using that's kind of like a reflection. Um, but let's go ahead where it says color. What we can do is click that and make it black. So we can make the color of this really dark. And if you ever need to get back out, what I like to do is just kind of close it down, click on it again. So now you can see we have um, much darker. So what we can do is change the opacity of this image. So right now it's at 70. So if we change that to like 40, you're gonna see it's gonna get real dark. So that's kind of what we're looking for, something really uh, contrasty, so between the logo and the floor. So I think that looks pretty good so far. And you can see right here when you rotate, it's automatically kind of getting the reflection from the light. 
So that material, which was the marble noise, that's what this is right here where it says matte cap. If you click on that, this is how it's receiving the light. And that's how you bring in a SVG image, extrude it, add lights, materials. It's kind of like a quick overview on how you can pull this off. Uh, then from here inside Spline, they give you tons of different options. So it depends on what you want to do from here. Uh, you can always do an interactive model where the user can use their mouse and kind of move it around like this, pan left and right, give them the option to zoom. Um, and of course, they also have the simple things like your um, images. You can always just import this as an image and then hit export and it's just gonna download this as a JPEG or a PNG. And then if you wanted, uh, if you had any sort of animation, you can always just click that right here. But if we go ahead and let's just uh, position this a little bit better. So it's something like that. And if I hit export and export this as a JPEG, so you can keep this on right here, uh, BG color. Uh, you're not seeing it because right now we made sure the floor was big enough to cover up the whole environment basically. And then your ratio is just gonna increase your file size and your dimensions. So let's go ahead and just hit export and let's see how that looks, just a simple export like that. So here's what the image looks like when it's rendered out. And technically there are shadows here. Um, I didn't cover that in this tutorial. That'd be a different type of tutorial. But uh, the reason why you don't really see too many shadows is because we have a black background right here. So it does cast some shadows. So if you started to use a different color back here instead of like a black leather, it would of course show different shadows. And that's it for the spline tutorial. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when I release new tutorials like this. Again, this is Mark from Wicked Design.